Hi everybody, today we're going to read Baba and that Rascal Arthur by Laurent de Boomhoff. Look at all the elephants holding each other's tails, trunk to tail. Baba and the King and Queen Celeste were tired after a year of hard work and they set out with their children for a holiday by the sea. Here they are at Celesteville Station. There they are. Pom, Flora, Alexander and Zephyr, the monkey, climbed up the overhead car. Baba's cousin Arthur wanted to go with them, but Baba said he was too big now. Oh, that's them there climbing up. Look, there's the monkey. During the journey, the three little elephants looked out of the windows and Arthur made faces at them from down below. It was great fun. Look, there they are, up in the car there. And there's Arthur at the bottom, smiling up at them. Baba had taken a house at the, hmm, this is a big word, isn't it? Barabar Botten. When they arrived, the children ran on ahead, very excited. Isn't the sea lovely, Celeste cried contentedly, and the house looks so nice. There they're running along. Oh, that's a lovely house by the sea, isn't it? As soon as they'd unpacked, the whole family hurried down to, to bathe. Pom, Flora and Alexander hung back, but Baba coaxed them in. Come in with me, he said. We'll have such fun splashing water over each other. Look at Arthur enjoying himself. At last they ventured in and could hardly be persuaded to come out again. There's Arthur having fun blowing water out of his trunk. There's the little ones, a little bit scared to go in. But Baba says, come on, let's go. A little later, Zephyr took Flora out in a boat and told her one of her favorite stories about a little mermaid. At the end, she said, I should so like to see the little mermaid. There they are in the boat. But you can't, said Zephyr. She only appears as if, if somebody really needs her help. Meanwhile, Pom and Alexander played at their being little parcels, which their father had to carry, on one on his shoulder and the other tucked under his arm. They had to hold on tight while he hopped about. Oh, look how sweet they are. I'm tripping over my words today, aren't I? Arthur had a plan of his own and slipped away while Zephyr and the other children went shrimping. Flora found some crabs. There's the children going shrimping with Zephyr. And look, there's the little crab that Flora found. Come and see my beautiful earrings, she called to her brothers. But when Zephyr took hold of one, it pinched him and hurt. His skin was not as tough as an elephant's, but where was Arthur all this time? There's Flora with the little crabs. Oh no, look, there's Sophia getting his finger bitten. Where is that Arthur, do you think? He had found what he was after, the great airfield nearby. There he is, looking at the plains. This is more interesting than fishing, he thought. Arthur had never seen so many aeroplanes at one time before. The best one of all was a green one. He longed to climb up on its tail. There's all the people chatting, getting ready to go on the aeroplane. And what happened next? Elephants rushed onto the field to see the big green aeroplane take off. <gasps> With Arthur on its tail! He had just clambered up there when the plane began to move. He was terrified but dared not jump. He clung on for dear life. First one, then another of the elephants caught sight of him. He's pointing. Look, there's Arthur. They all began to shout, he's going to fall! He's going to fall! Soon, all they could see was a tiny spot of red on the aeroplane. Come on, said the elephants. We'd better go and inform the king at once. He'll be on the beach. 
Oh dear. The pilot of the aeroplane threw out a parachute and Arthur managed to put it on. Then he jumped. At first he fell like a stone. Then the parachute opened. It was fun until a strong wind blew him far, far from Barabar Bottom. There he is jumping out off the aeroplane wing and there it's opening, opening, opening. Oh, 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 now he's being blown away. He landed among some kangaroos. Well, big bird, said one, where do you come from? I'm not a bird, Arthur replied. I can't fly. I was in a flying machine, a huge thing, very noisy. I came down by parachute. Soon, Arthur and the kangaroos were great friends. Look at all the kangaroos there. All the little birds flying around. There he comes into land. Arthur got down on all fours to play with the babies. Oh, look how sweet they are. But he could not stay with them. He thought of Baba and Celeste waiting for him at home. Am I far from Barabar Bottom? He asked the kangaroos. Not very far, they told him. We will show you the way. There they're all showing him the way home. Thank goodness they know the way. The kangaroos took him to the station over to catch a train home. They said over and over again, You will come back, won't you, Mr. Elephant? Perhaps, Arthur replied. He was sorry to leave these nice new friends. There they're at the train track. When the train came, it was not meant for elephants. So Arthur had to travel in a truck. Soon he fell fast asleep. They came to a forest where little monkeys often used to drop from the trees to the roof of the trains for a ride. When they saw Arthur, they cried, Look what's here! Let's play a trick on him! And those mischievous animals unhitched his truck. Look, there goes the train off on its way. And here he is fast asleep. Oh dear, oh dear, Arthur wailed when he woke up. Now what has happened? He walked till he came to the bank of a river, where he met two dromedaries. They look like camels. Good day, he said. My name is Arthur. I am the little cousin of Babar, king of the elephants. Could you take me to Barabar Bottom? I'm lost. The dromedaries replied that they would be delighted to take, take Arthur if he could think of a way to cross the river, which was full of crocodiles. Luckily, a nice fat hippopotamus and his brother offered to help. Look at all those crocodiles there with their snapping jaws. There's a little hippo coming to help. And there's the two hippo brothers. And in no time... Oh... Granny's reading is wrong. And there, in no time, was a bridge of hippopotamuses. The crocodiles were furious. Look, they made a bridge, boom, 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 all the way across from one bank to the other bank. And there the dromedaries are just crossing along to the other side where the monkeys are. Look at those grumpy crocodiles. They were just hoping for elephant snack. Over the river, the three travellers plunged into the desert and kept going until evening when they rested. The next day was very hot. At length, they came to an Arab village. Arthur was terribly thirsty. He had to find water. An old man showed him where he could find a well. Arthur was just finishing his second bucketful when he saw Babo at the end of the street running towards him. There's the well. There's the man showing him where the well is, the bucket. They put that string down with the bucket on it, down into the well to get water and pulled it up and he was having a drink. There comes Baba. Baba was so pleased to have found Arthur that he did not scold him much. They drove back to Baraba Button. When they reached the seashore, Baba sounded his horn and the whole family rushed to meet them. There you are at last, cried Zephyr. Typical Arthur. Look at everybody running to meet Arthur. And that's the end. I think you're going to have to tell me how to say that word. Barabarbotan. Barabarbotan. Oh, silly granny.
the end. <laughs>